Hey guys, we've got a special treat today. We're gonna to do a little virtual tour of our distillery. And the first thing I wanna talk about is kind of the name and the brand and how all that came to be. Um, originally, you know, we wanted to have a very professional brand, very professional label. We hired a, a branding agency. They came along, they walked us through this whole process and, and um, helped us discover the name and our story. Um, you know, it turned out to be pretty easy because our story is very authentic. We, we own a rice and crawfish farm down here in South Louisiana, and uh, my family's been here since the 1870s. My great-great-uncle John was a family patri patriarch, and um, when we were looking for a name, it just kind of was a natural. Uh, we named the, the uh, spirit, the brand, if you will, after my great-great-uncle John, J.T. Millick. You know, once we had the name and the story down, then it came down to time to produce a label. I always like to talk about all the sort of the progression of the label. You know, when we first started off, we were over here and uh, we had our name, we had a bottle, we had Louisiana on the bottle, but we, we hadn't quite grasped it. And uh, we went back and forth a lot with, um, with the, you know, the developers and um, they, they just didn't quite understand what we were looking for. And uh, things got a little contentious and I was get, starting to get a little grouchy and my wife told me uh, to calm down. I was gonna make everybody mad and uh, I asked her if she thought she could do any better. So that weekend, she designed these four choices and uh, that was sort of the beginnings of the final, the final label. So you can, I guess you could say she sort of designed it. We couldn't have done it without the agency and uh, you know, we worked on that progression. We wanted to tie in sort of our heritage our namesake, Louisiana, the crawfish, the rice, everything's on there on the back of the label is our story if you'd like to read it. But uh, ultimately we came down and we, uh, we finished up with uh, the current label. And I'll show you that in a minute when you see one of our bottles. So right here, what you're looking at is uh, two gold medals. One of them's a double gold medal for best vodka. We, uh, Two years ago, right in the middle of COVID 2020, we won best in, in category, best in class, and a double gold medal for our vodka. Um, ironically, we won that from the show that uh, I originally went to to sort of learn how to distill spirits. And two years later, we sort of stole the show and won everything in the vodka category. So we truly have an award-winning vodka. We're very proud of it. and. Uh, Got the medals to prove it, so there you go. So I got a few pictures here in my office that are uh, great keepsakes for me. At the, at the bottom, that's me on the bicycle and my grandfather. Um, got my grandfather with uh, Roy Harkey, I believe, uh, standing in front of his Model T collection. And then our, my great, great aunts, uh, Aunt Jo, Aunt Helen, my grandfather's mother in the other picture. And then at the top, we've got uh, Uncle John, Uncle Mike, Uncle Fritz, and then my grandfather's father, Doris Don Fouge. And uh, that's my grandfather, the little kid sitting in his lap. Um, that's a 1928 Buick touring car, I believe it's called. Uh, they, they, uh, supposedly the family lore story goes that they drove that car to the World's Fair, somewhere way up north, maybe New York or something. So, in other parts of the story, I talk about the 20 acres where my great-great-uncle John originally planted the first Providence rice. And if you look back there along that tree line where the, the pine trees are, the 20 acres is literally right back there. Ironically, that's the same place that uh, my brother and I started our crawfish farm with those original 20 acres. So, everything we do here starts with a rice crop. Uh, we plant the crop in March, April every year, and we harvest in August, September. And uh, we harvest that grain out of the field, and we bring it here to our grain complex, our bin complex, I should say. Um, we can hold roughly nine million pounds of rice right here in these set of bins. There's six small ones right here. Uh, just as a reference point, when my dad farmed, he, his whole crop was in these six little small bins. Now. We hold 10 times that. We, we uh, on a full harvest, roughly 9 million pounds to fill this complex. And um, we'll hold that for 
six months to a year, depending on the market for that season. Um, you know, since we started JT Millick, um, every year we grow a little more and a little more that is specifically for the uh, distillation purposes. And hopefully one day we'll use all of it and uh, hopefully some of our neighbors as well. Across the road, there's a bunch of big oak trees. My grandfather's house is there. It burnt down in 2001. There's still a chimney. It's over there. We left the chimney. We're not, not knowing what we do with it, but uh, I think it may be part of a visitor center someday. We've got one barrel warehouse built now. We're about to build a second one. And uh, eventually it's gonna be a big complex of buildings if this all works out. But uh, so we've got the 20 acres on the other side and the, the barrel warehouse is on the other side. So come on, follow me. We're gonna walk in the distillery. So we're in our distillery now and uh, I'm gonna walk you guys through the process. In step one, we bring in all our rice, we get it milled and then we measure it in 2,000 pound bags. That's sort of the standard uh, batch, if you will. Whether we're making vodka or we're making whiskey, we use a 2,000 pound batch. That way we keep everything consistent and everything stays the same. The first thing you do when you're making a whiskey or a vodka is you make a beer. So to do that, we take this big tank, the first one that he's cleaning out, and we cook some rice. So we cook some rice. You could think of this as a big giant rice cooker. We fill it roughly half full of water that we uh, filter to our specifications. That's very important to have the right water. Water is massively important in a distillery. Then we add the 2000, we add, uh, I'm sorry, we add steam and we boil the water. Then once we reach temperature, we add the rice. Um, we cook the rice. The whole process takes pretty much all day. He's, we're here at the end of the day and he's cleaning out and sanitizing for tomorrow's next run. When, the way that the process works is you take a starch, a rice or a corn or a barley or something, and you cook it and you turn it into a sugar. And the last step is you introduce yeast. Yeast basically eats the sugar and it excretes carbon dioxide and alcohol. And that is beer. So uh, the first beer probably happened by accident because there's wild yeast floating around everywhere. Some grain got wet, the yeast got on it, uh, turned into beer and people figured out that that was a pretty good thing. So uh, we make our beer and then we put it in the fermentation tanks. And then once we're done with that, the ferment is cooked and we add it to one of our fermentation tanks. It sits in there for nine to 14 days, depending on the product we're making. And we're making a beer. Now our beer wouldn't taste good if you just drank it, but we're making our beer specifically for distillation purposes. Uh, one great thing about rice, it makes a lot of alcohol. Uh, uh, it's just a very good converter of alcohol. So um, we, it sits in here for about nine days and then we transfer it to a beer well. And a beer well looks just like these tanks, it's the one in the back. And the only difference is it has a paddle in it that mixes everything up, gets everything sort of homogenized. And then we slowly, about a gallon to two gallons a minute, pump that product into our still. And I'm gonna take you in there in a minute. We're gonna go explain how that still works. Follow me. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little louder because we're actually in the steel room. It's actually running right now while we're here. We're making a whiskey. Um, I'll explain real quick how this works. This hose is coming in from the bottom. We pump the beer into the steel. We pump it up to the top of this first column and it drops down the column. There's a series of plates in there that spreads the liquid out and we're introducing heat through the bottom of that column and that, that heat rises and it separates the water from the alcohol. The way it does that is because the alcohol boils at a lower temperature than water. Water boils at 212 and alcohol boils at different temperatures, but roughly around 160. And I hope nobody gets mad at me if I got that not exactly right. But uh, regardless, it vaporizes, the alcohol vaporizes before the water does. So the water falls to the bottom of the column and the alcohol and vapor goes out the top. Then we've got a series of three more columns and depending on what we're making, we might run it through those other columns. To make whiskey, we go through the second column and we separate the heads 
and then we, it comes out of the steel as a form of whiskey. Now, one thing I want to point out about whiskey and all spirits, for that matter, it comes out clear. So, 100% of the color from a whiskey comes from the barrel. This is our whiskey that we're making right now. Uh, that's pretty much full flow rate. We make about three barrels a day, three 53 gallon barrels a day, and we dump it into this tank, and then each day we fill those three barrels. So, if we're making vodka, then we use the other two columns. Vodka is, um, you can make it faster because you only have to wait 30 days, so to speak. It takes about 30 days from start to finish, but it's much more difficult to actually make when it comes to the technical part of running the steel. So, you gotta really be on our game to keep that, that vodka consistent. Uh, we use the last two columns, and in order to produce a vodka, you have to get to 95% alcohol, which is 190 proof. So um, extremely difficult to do technically, but uh, you know, again, we could do that every 30 days. So almost everybody comes out with a clear spirit of vodka first. And then of course you have to be patient and wait on the whiskey. So uh, next step, we're gonna show you how we fill a barrel and then uh, we'll take you to visit our barrel room. So we'll see you, follow me. So here are our barrels. These barrels have just been filled with our whiskey. Got them all strapped down and we're gonna move them to our barrel room. Every single cast that we produce here uh, has to be labeled with a number. And uh, we have to know where every single barrel is at every, any given time. Uh, very uh, technical process of keeping track of all these barrels. The more you get, the more complicated it gets, but uh, there you go. That's one of our barrels, and we'll take a, take a little walk. We're gonna walk into our barrel room. Okay, so here we are in our barrel room. Um, doesn't look like it, but this is four years worth of work. We've moved some of our barrels out of here and moved them next door to our new barrel warehouse. Didn't take long to fill this thing. Filled it quicker than I thought. Um, but this is uh, our 53 gallon program that we're using for our rice whiskey. We do have a little bit of bourbon that we're making in here, uh, but our focus is definitely on the rice whiskey. And a little quick story, um, when I first started this, I had no idea what I was doing, totally green, and uh, asked a few guys a few questions. I said, you know, what do I need to do? We, we, uh, we made some whiskey. Now what do I need to do with it? Well, you need to put it in a barrel. And somebody said, if you put it in a smaller barrel, you know, it'll age faster. And so originally, over here I've got six little five gallon barrels and that was our original batch number one. We never even tasted that because later on people told me that uh, five gallon whiskey is not very tasty and uh, I quickly converted to a full size uh, 53 gallon barrel. We use a new American white oak barrel. The reason we chose that is because that's what bourbon is filled in and uh, we felt like uh, we were already taking enough chances with rice. Nobody has ever really made a rice whiskey. That's one of the reasons we're doing this. Uh, there's no real, uh, I guess you'd say, uh, what's the right word? Uh, successful rice whiskey brand on the planet that I'm aware of, um, at least not at any kind of uh, scale. And so we're taking enough chances doing that and we, uh, we chose to match the bourbon profile with, with the barrels. So the rice gets roughly, and any, any whiskey for that matter, somewhere between 60 to 80% of its flavor from the barrel. So we're pretty confident in the barrel we use, pretty excited about it. Um, we, we put down about three of these a day um, and we just keep doing it every day. So. Uh, some of these barrels will be in here for four years. Some of them will be in here maybe for 10 years. We, uh, we just released the teaser release. If uh, some of you might've noticed that, we had 1,000 bottles of um, our Founders Edition whiskey that we released in November of 21. And uh, of course, everybody wanted more and why didn't you make more? And the truth is we just didn't know any better. You know, we were just getting started uh, we made 15 barrels in that first original batch and that's just all we had. So the next batch was filled in April of the following year 
And uh, next month, in the month of uh, March in 22, we're gonna taste those barrels and make a decision and hopefully release our second batch in May of 22. And then on after that, each, each batch will progressively come out as it's available. Uh, one of the biggest things about whiskey making is you gotta be patient. Uh, you can't release it until it's ready. Sometimes barrels get better, sometimes they get worse. Uh, that's just the normal cycle of aging whiskey in barrels. And so, you know, there's not a lot of data on rice whiskey. So this is a big experiment and we're uh, trying to get it right. So hopefully you guys get to taste some of that whiskey soon. Uh, check out our rice vodka and I hope you enjoyed the tour. We'll see you.